Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good week. Well, it's Tuesday, so it's time for our usual crafty catch-up. I do love just the thought of coming and spending time with you and, and just sort of, oh, stopping a minute, relaxing and, and just having some nice quality time. Just where we can just be together and, and just do a little bit of crafting or maybe just have a brew and a cheeky biscuit together. I think sometimes we're all so busy, there's so much going on. It's nice to just give ourselves that luxury. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm sure you have. We had our fairy fest at the weekend um, and we've got some beautiful new stamps by Tracy. And they are absolutely gorgeous. I have to say the detail in them. And when you see the florals, I mean, the fairies are gorgeous, but you know me and florals. When you see them, you'll know why I love them. Now, I am going to be using them in the next few weeks, but I do listen to your comments. And quite a few of our lovely followers, friends and followers in Australia and New Zealand, have said that when the new stamps come, come out, it does take a while for them to get over to them obviously they're not next door are they um so what i thought is i'll sort of give them a, a, a week and we'll use an older stamp because i don't want you to feel left out and as i say i do listen to your comments and i must admit i'm very impatient waiting i am when tracy shows his new things i'm like look i need it now i'm sorry i'm just a crafter when all said and done and i need it with a capital n need it now so what i thought is i'd listen to you and we'd use a good old favorite stamp and so i've come up with this design and to be honest it also ties in um a few weeks ago i did some notelet cards and i got such lovely feedback on those and again i thought this is a lovely design that could be used for notelets again just change up the colors change up the stamp the stencil and I have to say the stamp is called fuchsia and in my garden at the minute I must admit my fuchsias are looking gorgeous so another reason I've gone for this stamp most beautiful stamp um some of you may have it some of you may not um if you haven't look at that absolutely beautiful I don't know why I'm showing you the acetate because you can see it there stamped can't you <laughs> there's nothing like an old fool is there hey so this is the design I've come up with. So shall we get started? Must admit I'm a bit tired today. Shouldn't really say that, should I? But I am, so do excuse me if I sort of wander off a bit. You know, when you come to my house for coffee, I'm afraid you know me, you take me as I am. Now this is a six by six square card blank. So I'm starting off with a piece of multifarious card and it's five and a half inches square. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my black Sharpie line round before we start because I must admit the other day I did um, forget and do it at the end and my pen did whiz across. I just wasn't quite concentrating. So it just shows no matter how many times you do this, sometimes, you know, these things happen. So we shall do this at the beginning. You see, I've gone quiet. I'm actually concentrating because I know at the minute, I'm just going through, still going through one of those phases where, you know, I keep dropping stamps. I keep misstamping. I, I just, sometimes it happens, doesn't it? happens to all of us now i have got a clean piece of paper under here so i can look a bit more professional there we go so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by actually stamping the fuchsia in the middle and like i say this is just such a beautiful stamp if you haven't got it i would certainly add it next time Maybe if you order the new stamps, if you haven't got this one. And a little tip, you know, stamps do get retired because obviously there are only so many Tracy can hold sort of as a back catalogue. So my tip would be if you see something, especially one of the older ones like this, I would certainly get it while you can. Now it's a silhouette, so I'm just making sure I'm putting plenty of ink on because as I say at the minute, I'm going through one of those phases. Now my plan is 
to stamp this in the middle. There we go. Got my uh, piece of kitchen towel there stuck on my jumper. I told you. Do you know at the minute? Hmm. I'm sure it's just not me. Please let me know that you have uh, days, although mine's going into weeks at the minute like this. Right, now it's a good silhouette, so I am going to let it just soak in well so I get a, a beautiful image. Look at that. Stunning. And you know what? I know I've said recently about um, sympathy cards, but I do think this would make a beautiful, um, if you can have beautiful, but a sympathy card. But as you know, I do love stamping in monochromatic. I love black and white. And again, I think this could be, um, you can create a beautiful design with black and white. But also you can add, if you want to add Posca colour or gel pen colour on top, you can. I do think it's so versatile. Now I'm going to give that a blot because obviously I've stamped in my VersaFine Claire and I don't want it to smudge because I'm going to add my stencil work round it next. Now I know you could say, why don't I do the stencil work first and then do the stamping? And the honest reason is because I've mentioned this before, I'm not a confident stamper. If it's one thing I do struggle with, it's stamping. And I don't know whether it's dexterity. I mean, I have arthritis in my knuckle. I, I don't know. It could be my size, you know, five foot one little little midget. You know, who knows? So for me, I have to do it this way. But you could, if you want to do your stenciling first and then add your stamping, by all means, you know what to say. You do whatever works for you. Now we're going to come in with our circle mask. And I think it was the large one that I used. And I've got a beautiful stencil here and I know I favour this one and it's flower spray. But you can use any stencil you wish. Sorry, you didn't notice that, did you? We've got an Eric hair. And what I want to do is get my inks ready as well. And the three inks I've gone for today, and again, you could just use one ink colour if you wanted. I'm just really into blending colours through my stencil at the minute. So I've gone for Lime Punch, Della Blue, big favourite of mine that, and Sahara. Just to sort of blend a little bit of yellow tone in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them on my mat here and put the lids and this is where it's so easy I've got my three stencil brushes there to run out of space but I want to try and do it so that you can see the way I work so I'm hoping you can I'm hoping that's in shot and then I'm going to pop my circle stencil, but I don't want it in the middle. And also because I've got this little edge here, I'm actually going to put that. And I just thought it was nice to offset the design. And I'm being mindful, I almost want this sort of midline top and bottom, but also then I've got space for my sentiment here. Now I am leaving my sentiment until later because this might be one that I can then choose my sentiment. You could tape your stencil down, but I'm going to, <laughs> dare I say it at the minute, live dangerously, which probably isn't good at the minute. But I'm going to try and hold that. So I'm happy with that. Pop this stencil over the top. And then just going to hold it in place and let's see what happens. So I'm going to start with the yellow. And again, my yellow stencil brush just onto the lid and I'm just going to sort of come off my circle mask and obviously I'm going through this beautiful stencil and I just want some yellowy tones here. Again, you could do opposite corners, you could do an ombre effect. 
And then, I mean, if you want to lift up and have a look, oh, that's looking lovely. So let's come in with the green now. And again, and I'm going to start in the corners because I like my corners deeper. And my green, I'll come right down. Make sure I go in the right lid to this corner. And then we'll add some in this corner. Just sort of blend over the yellow. Now, if you want to just extra blend in, I'm coming back in with my yellow stencil brush and just going over that join. And if I lift this up, oh, can you see? That's looking lovely. Now, I'm just going to move my hand round. So I want to come in with the blue now. And again, I'm going to start in the corner. Now, I must admit, my blue, considering these were so juicy, I think I use Della Blue rather a lot because I must admit it's, um, it's not half as juicy as it was. I can certainly tell it's one of my favourite colours. So, a little bit more over here and the blue into the green. And if I'm not sure... Just lift it up a little. Well, actually, that's quite nice. But what I will do with my green brush, just come over that join and then with the blue. Now, if you're worried about contaminating your brushes, let's just lift this up first. Look at that, beautiful. If you're worried about contaminating your brushes, just on Inky Binky, give them a little bit of a, of a wipe. Now, I'm just going to put the lids on my ink. And then I won't put my arm or my elbow in the ink, which I am likely to do at the minute. And I'm going to lift this off. Look, there we go. And how pretty is that? As I say, just such lovely blending. Now what I will do is I just want to clean my mask. And we'll just spritz. We've got a little bit of ink here. And obviously my stencil, I'll be spritzing that and putting that on a piece of card to give me a lovely background. So let's just see if we've got any ink on here. We may have some, we may not. And yes, Eric is here and he has just had a bit of a spritz with water. Now, you know this, you'd never know what you're going to get, depending on how much ink was on the stencil. But it doesn't matter because it will give me a base to start. And I'm just cleaning my stencil, aren't I? So I think doing this is good because, you know, if you don't expect much, then the background you get that you love, you can use. And it gets you used to realising that, you know, nothing's certain, nothing's definite. It's nice to almost have that bit more. Oh, look at that, yeah. That is pretty. And especially as that dries. And what's lovely with that, it's not too solid a background. And especially, I think, maybe the new... Maybe we could use that next week with the new fairies. What do you think? I'll put that over there to dry, give this a wipe, and then that can go away. Now, I just want to check that circle mask. Now, the next bit is I'm going to draw around this. So, hence, I want my mask, my circle, nice and dry. So, I've got a fine liner here. Now, you can do this two ways. You can do it by hand if you want. I'm actually just going to pop that back on. And I'm going to very carefully and slowly go round. Check this join here. And I tend to start and finish where my little um, stem is because I'm just going to hand draw a little there, like we've tied it. Phew. You know, that was the bit that if it was going to go wrong, can you imagine? <laughs> and then 
let's just add some finishing touches on our beautiful now as I say you could add some colour if you wanted but I just like the black and white for this so what I'm going to do is get my white pastel pencil and I'm just going to add just some little highlights And again, sorry if I put my head over. Now you could add, as I say, some colour. But I just like the white. And again, you could add, you could use your, your gel pen. If you want to add your gel pen. But I just like the paleness of the pastel pencil. I think it just really adds to it. And again, I just smudge the pastel pencil. And I just love that almost, that sort of chalkiness that it gives. What I am going to do actually though, I didn't on my original, is I'm going to get my silver gel pen and just add, just on the ends of the fuchsia here, just a little bit, just a touch, and maybe just at the end. Don't want to over. Yeah, that just gives a little bit, a little bit of extra. Like I say, if you want to use your white gel pen, you can. I just like the subtleness. And again, we're all different. We all will pop those away. Like I say, this is, is such a, a, a quick design. So let's get the sentiment stamped. Now, again, I'm using the sentiment from the heartfelt um, verses. And, you know, use your acetate. If, we, if I just take that off, look, you could put with love there. That would be beautiful. Will the birthday wishes fit? Let's have a look. Yep, we could get birthday wishes in there. In fact, this would make a lovely birthday card. So instead of just for you, I'm going to change my mind and put birthday wishes. Now right, let's pop that back on there. Pop that back on there. I'm up. And then I'm thinking this is a lovely card for my friend's birthday. So again, just excuse me if my head comes over, but I, I want to get this straight. I hope you didn't hear that. My hand just cracked. <laughs> oh, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? And then because for me there was a large area here, now I could add some splats if I wanted, but this one I felt it, I just didn't want to add the splats. But what I did want to add was a little piece of ribbon. Now you could use black card if you wanted, but I've just gone for ribbon and I just felt the design needed something over here. And I have to say this beautiful fine ribbon is in my box now. Shh. Don't tell anyone, this is a secret. So, you know, ladies, you know when you buy new tops and they have those little sort of um, ribbon hooks inside for hanging? I must admit, those um, little almost loops of ribbon really get on my nerves. Um, so I cut them off and I save them because, well, I'm a crafter, aren't I? It's what we do. And it means I've got a lovely box full of lots of little pieces of ribbon like this. And also, they put one on each side, don't they? So I have two. So that's perfect for today. So I've got one for each card. So that's where these come from. So all I would do is... Now, again, you can use your mat if you want. I tend to just do this by eye. I just get myself a couple of pieces of tape. But let's, do it, let's just use our mat and then we know it's nice and straight. So we'll pop that there. And again, I just put some tape on the back.
And if I want to be doubly sure, because yes, I did move that. There we go. Now, again, you could add another bow, but I must admit, I just like it like that. So if I bring this in, so like I say, when you're buying new tops for me, you get such a wealth of extra little bits to add to your craft stash. And there we go. That's the whole design. But as I say, imagine for notelets, because you could actually leave this. Mind you, just for you is a very good um, sentiment for notelets. Um... But as I say, you could alter this up a bit. You could change the colours of these. Maybe if you know your friend has favourite colours, you could actually do the, the, the flowers of your fuchsia that colour. Or what other stamps have you got that would go with this design? And as for stencils, well, we've got so many stencils, haven't we? Beautiful stencils that would go well here. Maybe change the colour tones up a bit. Anyway, I'm hoping it's given you some ideas little ideas of what you could do and you know what if you're not in the mood for crafting maybe just have that brew have a chat and maybe then Mr Mojo will come back and you will feel like having a go so you take care everybody thank you as always for popping in I have to say I don't know where the time goes you know we start chatting and before we know it card design's finished and thank you for all your lovely comments and feedback. I really appreciate it. Have a good week and I'll see you again next week. Love and hugs. Bye for now.